Uh, it's just a kind of a funny story. I don't know. I'm not trying to pick on any religious group. Majority of my case, considering us Buddhists are so small, everybody else is a majority practically. In the presence, being Buddhist is a little tough. The Christians really persecute us, and the Muslims persecute us. <laughs> I don't know. They tear up our books, throw our books in the trash. They tear up our books, throw it in the trash. Like get it out of the library, our book, tear it up, and throw it in the trash. That's just one of the things they do. It's irritating. Anyway, I, I teach Buddhism in this prison. I have been for like, I don't know, almost five years, once a month. But I also teach this Alexander technique, which I think is, I don't know. I don't get tons of agreement. I mean, I got tons of agreement in the Alexander world for what I would be about to say. But the Alexander world and the Buddhist world don't intersect all that greatly. I mean, The four or five people I know who intersect really powerfully. In my, in my school in Buddhism, they just love Alexander technique, but you don't really find a lot of people who really intersect. I mean, really practice both, you know, seriously. You got some, a lot of Buddhists who dabble in Alexander technique a little bit. You got some Alexander technique people who know a little bit about Buddhism, uh, you know, but not many that can really be conversant in both. But uh, I think it's the cat's pajamas, you know, to put the two together is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. People don't realize how powerful it is. Anyway, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I go into this prison and every month and I teach them Mostly Buddhism, but I teach them a lot of Alexander, too. But I don't know. It's kind of hard to teach them. I don't know. I'm, I got to get better. I'm about to get smarter at Alexander because I'm not really getting it totally across to them. But, I, but in the process of doing it, I'm, I don't know. It's, it's very powerful, very creative, and... I'm turning it into this act, sort of. It's like a show I could take on the road or something. I don't know. It's like a performance art. It's really powerful, anyway. <clears throat> so, you know, when I would first touch these guys, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, Alexander Technique is... Uh, it's not that weird for a man to touch a man like that, you know, in the normal world. But it's a little strange in there. <laughs> I don't know. Every, every time I've ever, you know, the first time I, this guy, guy comes in there and they, I do this Alexander on him, it's like, oh, <laughs> but, but they get over it pretty fast, you know, especially because all, all the other guys have had it 50 times, you know, the guys that have been there a long time or they figured it out and it's not. Anyway, I go in there last time and uh, it was a big crowd, number one, usually because of COVID, We've grown a lot. There should be 30 in there. And we used to get, you know, 22 in there easy when we hadn't grown quite as much. But because of COVID, things have been screwed up and there's only been like eight. If I walk in there, there's 16. <laughs> These are big old guys, a lot of them, man. Uh, 
So I don't know, I just launch right into doing Alexander. So I just walk around behind them one after the other and give them this little light touch and talking to them and trying to teach them a certain, it, to me it's just advanced mindfulness, which is what it is. And they don't call it advanced mindfulness because they tried to, but they couldn't get it done. They couldn't get it through the, the council because the council was, was very conserved in that regard. It would have grown it like hell if they had a comment, but my, some kind of mindfulness, something mindful, you know, Alexander Mindfulness or whatever. They wanted to change the name, but they should have changed the name, but the conservative forces didn't allow it. Uh, I gotta keep this thing under 15 minutes or it screws up its YouTube value and get it on my website. So I, gotta, I haven't been timing it right, but I gotta move it along here. Uh, so, I, and I didn't realize it, but so this guy had come to our class. It's hard to get into our class. You gotta like <laughs> sign up and say this is your faith. But anyway, he's there. He's standing over the, on the side of the room and he uh, he just starts saying in kind of a loud voice, a man should not touch another man like that. <laughs> and he just says it over and over for like 20 minutes loud. He's sort of heckler, he's a heckler. He's my first teacher in a Buddhist class, my first Muslim heckler. <laughs> a man should not touch another man like that. <laughs> you know, at first I thought it was kind of irritating, but, the, but also... You know, when, when I would think about how every one of these guys, when I first touched them like that, would just go like, <laughs> it was kind of funny. You know, in the context of that prison world, you know, <laughs> this is not something you're going to do on the yard. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do this on the yard. <laughs> it, it does look weird in the context of the prison world. <laughs> it's a little offbeat. Oh, it was funny.